Hi guys, welcome to my video about Unraid. Uh, lots of nice comments on Unraid and some people are saying, can we do it as a business solution? There's a lot of stuff about the gaming side of it all, but nothing really for the business side. So this is my first video. So we'll do m m v weekly videos building up to um, t uh, video tutorials on how to do stuff as well. So for your very, very first basic um, build, so if you're looking at a very, like a storage solution that's not very, very big, something very cheap to start with, then you can scale it from being small to a very large um, enterprise solution on Unraid. It's very scalable. Depending on the license you purchase for Unraid, uh, you can purchase a license for like the basic license up to I think it's like three or four devices. Uh, next one six, and the next one after that is unlimited on the devices. Very cheap. It's not very expensive. You're probably looking at an unlimited license. You're probably looking at about eighty dollars, it's or eighty nine dollars, um, and that's it. You've got a license to put as many devices you one, it's licensed to per device, which I basically mean where how many SSD drives or SATA drives you got installed in the system. That's how it licenses it. Um, base, if you're going to be talking, let's talk about a small solutions. So if you're looking for, I know something like nine terabytes or say thirty terabyte storage solution, very easy. I would always install two two SSD drives as your cache drive. You can have four, you can have six, depending on how many ports you have. So I would go minimum two. So I would recommend the uh, SSD drives, Kingston or uh, Western Digital. I use either or, they're really good. Make sure they've got nice high read performance and nice high write performances because that's a, a bonus, definitely essential. 500 gig, I would say minimum, have two of those. Uh, I've got um, an Unray box here that has two, well actually both my Unray boxes here all have uh, two minimum 500 gigs. I've only just upgraded them to four. Uh, so I would recommend two 500 gig SSD drives as standard, and three SATA drives as standard. Okay. So the reason the reason being is the SSD drive is the caching pool for your system. So you can actually pick folders on your normal drives to say using the cache pool, which makes it much more faster read and write speeds, um, rather than waiting around for the hard drives um, to save and stuff these are much more higher than after uh, I think 24 hours it's standardly it will move the data back to the set SATA drive any current data you currently keep using all the time will stay on the SSD if you've actually configured your folder and shared options on there which we'll talk more details in later anyway now with the, SS, uh, with the SATA drives uh, three minimal because one becomes your parity drive which is important because that's what makes how it recovers data from the other two drive if one of them gets lost um, gets damaged and data is lost um, so three minimum, I will go for three three terabytes. So that you always lose the first drive, so you don't get the volume of that data because that's your parity drive. The other two drives, if you've got them at three terabytes each, that give you six terabytes of storage, uh, to usable storage to use, uh, and the parity drive will keep it safe from data loss. Um, if you want to use bigger drives, you can do. It depends on your budget. So you can fit two sixes, uh, three sixes. Uh, you can fit. Um, I'm trying to remember all the drive sizes now. Uh, three 10 terabytes, three 12 ter terabytes, it's up to you. You can go four, five, depending on the license you purchase of Unraid, and depends if your case supports more than five drives and stuff. My case is support eight drives. So I've got um, four SSDs and four uh, three terabytes um, SATA drives. The reason why I stick with low, low, date, uh, low storage on the SATA drive side is because I've got two Unraid servers. One is an archiving server that just holds data, um, so if I finish a project, I dump it on that box, but then I'm still, I can still access it online whenever I need, need it. My, my first um, machine is my project machine, which once I finish a project, I then copy it over to the archive box. So it doesn't need to be very big. But if you just want one big solution with large volumes of data, then go bigger, the better. So keep budget low, and the drives are not cheap, they are expensive, especially the 10 terabyte ones and the 12 ones that just come on online now. They are expensive. Go for the Iron Wolf drives because they have, a f I think it's like five year warranty, two year data recovery free of charge. So if your drive is lost, um, broken or burns out or whatever, what happens to it, it comes dead, you can send the drive off in the post to Seagate. They will replace the drive. They'll do a data recovery if it's recoverable. Drive will come back with all your files on it if it's recoverable. You just put it back in the Unraid. Unraid is back normal again. When a drive fails in Unraid, it doesn't go offline, your still data is accessible, still runs at the same speed. Um, you just take the drive out, send that off. I will always have a spare drive um, in a drawer somewhere, so if you do get a dead drive, you can just quickly replace it 
why that one gets sent off because it might take several weeks to come back. But Seagate's been really good with the warranty because I had, um, I, I've, sorry, Western Digital, uh, I've sent off my SSDs. Uh, one of them actually went dead, literally just went offline. Data was still safe, um, sent it off, a week later came back in the post, a brand new SSD, put it straight back in my own raid, uh, all back up and running again. Really nice and easy. It doesn't matter what order you take the drives out and put them back into Unraid because Un Unraid uses the serial numbers on the drives to match it in its um, right order. So you can go on any any um, uh, hard um, SATA cable. It doesn't have to like like going back years ago. You had to make sure you label the drive up the right port it was sitting on. Don't need to Unraid. It uses the, it, as I said, it uses the uh, drive um, name of knowing where it goes. So it's, it's as easy as that. It's nice. Um, because I was a bit worried about it before. I did start labeling it when I went in, in there to put more drive out, looked at the thing. Oh, I use the serial numbers, that's really, really good. So yeah, so minimum two, 500 gigs, minimum three, uh, three terabytes, or three, three sixes, three tens, or three twelves, it's up to you. So that's what I would do, that's my basic build. Don't have to spend a fortune on a motherboard, you can spend like 80 pound on a motherboard, that'll be enough for that. Put uh, the, the biggest chip you can fit in it, or if not, at least start out with, if it's just gonna be a storage solution, then the three gig processor be f it will be fine for it, and that'll get you standard storage solution to start off with. And you can, as good as you can grow with it, you can change the motherboard later, you can change the processor later, you can upgrade, the, add more hard drives in it later, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So it's easy enough. So they're the very ba basics for Unraid. Um, that's what I would go for to start with. So we'll do, we'll do another video on soon. Where I'll bring my, my other box down, which I've got at home, which is my archive box. That's got everything loaded up in it. I, we can take you through a tour of the case, what I've got in it, why I've got it in there, and then we can have a look at the interface and talk about the um, virtual environments I run on them and how I set the drives up and stuff, and we'll do some guides on that. So stay tuned for those. Uh, we're going to do an Unraid video every week for you uh, going forward just for the business side. So speak to you soon. Cheers.